My patrons often suggest different subjects that they'd like me to paint. A subject that comes up a lot is shells. So this week I painted a few different seashells and I'll show you how I painted one of them in this video. I have a small collection of seashells that I use as subjects to paint. I've painted some of these shells before, quite large, but this time I decided to paint them on smaller pieces of paper and I wanted to keep them fairly simple so that beginners could have a go at painting them. And I think they look great on the wall if you love coastal themed decor. I deliberately used the same colours on each painting and I kept it simple by using only three Winsor & Newton colours, French Ultramarine, Burnt Sienna and Van Dyke Brown. And I mixed my favourite grey from Burnt Sienna and French Ultramarine. When mixing colours, one tip that I can share with you is this. Try not to overmix them. Lately, when mixing two or even three colours together, I try not to overmix them. I'll give them a quick swirl together with my brush and then as I begin painting with the mixture it will start to spread out and separate on the mixing palette. Then what I find is that the colour on my paper will change depending on where I pick the paint up from the palette. So as I said I mixed burnt sienna and French ultramarine together to make my grey for these paintings. When I picked the paint up where there was more blue, then I got a cool blue-grey. If I picked the paint up where there was more burnt sienna, then I got a warmer grey on my painting. And you'll see that on the shell that I paint in this video. I use the same mixture of grey, but there's a whole lot of different variations in the colour on the paper. I find that makes the painting more interesting to look at than if I had used a pre-mixed grey or if I had tried to keep the grey the same colour throughout. So watch for that as I paint. This little painting is painted on Arsh cold pressed watercolour paper and the shell that I'll demonstrate today is this one here. The first thing I'll do is mix up the grey that I like to use on a lot of my paintings. This is a mixture of French ultramarine and burnt sienna. These two colours make a beautiful grey. I can alter the temperature of the grey if I want to. If I want it to be a cool grey, I'll use more of the blue. If I want a warmer grey, I'll use more burnt sienna. See what that looks like? That's too warm for my painting. I want it to be cooler than that, so I'll add some more French ultramarine to my mixture. A quick mix is all I need to do. And that gives me a cooler grey that I need for these shells. I started by painting some water onto the outer part of the shell. What I wanted to do was paint in a shadow that runs along there. I want to paint it on the wet paper so that my paint edges will be soft. Here you can see the water that's on the paper. When I paint it on I try to get even coverage over the paper and I make sure there's no puddles lying anywhere. Now I need some of the grey that I mixed and I paint that onto the wet paper. There's a shadow along here that helps to give the shell some form. You can see that paint is bleeding with the water that's on the paper. I don't want to fuss with it too much. I put the paint where I need it and then I let the water on the paper do the rest. I've just picked up a bit more pigment there. Now I'm using that grey inside the shell. There's a cast shadow in there that I need to paint in. Here you can see by not overmixing the pigments my colour mixture varies depending on where I pick it up on the palette. And this is one of the reasons I love using watercolour. There's always an element of surprise and the variation in the mix makes for a more lively painting. Here I'm dropping in a bit of burnt sienna before that grey dries. I'll use that same grey mixture here. Here I'm on dry paper. There's a shadow that I need to paint in. 
This shadow here has got hard edges, so I don't need to wet the paper before I put the paint on. Okay, I've got the shape of it there. Now I'll dip my brush in my water container and quickly dab it on my cloth and use it to soften this edge along the top. That was the only edge there that needed to be soft. I wet the paper here where I'm working and I can paint in the back half of the shell. I'm still using the grey that I mixed. And here you can see all those beautiful colour variations. There's a shadow along this left hand side. It's got soft edges so I'm wetting the paper first. And I'll run that down that edge because there's water on the paper. I get the soft edge on the right hand side of the mark that I'm making. Along the front here I'll use some of the grey just to paint in the front edge of the shell. Now I've got some burnt sienna. And now I'll go back to the grey. There's a little crevice just in here that I'm going to paint in now. So I'll wet that area with water. I'll use some of the grey paint again. And that deepens the colour in there and it gives me a hard edge along the top. I'm still using the grey that I mixed from the two colours, Burnt Sienna and French Ultramarine. On this side there's a pale shadow that I can see. The shadow's got soft edges all the way around so I'll paint on wet paper here as well. And here's the grey paint again. Now I'm wetting this side of the shell with some water. And this is a bit of burnt sienna here. Okay, now I want to start painting in the markings on the shell. This is burnt sienna. And I'll paint these on dry paper. I've lost some of these markings on the shell, so I need to draw them back in for myself. Then I continue painting them in with burnt sienna. Here I've switched down to a slightly smaller brush. This is a number three round brush. Okay, now I want some Van Dyke Brown. This is a semi-transparent pigment. I thought I'd glaze this colour onto the marks that are in the shadow, just to darken them slightly. I don't want to put the colour on too dark. I still want to see the burnt sienna coming through. So I've added some water to it so that it's not too dark. I paint this on the dry paper as well. And as I said, I only paint it onto the shapes that are sitting in the shadow. This one here is sort of half in the shadow, half out of the shadow. So I'll take the paint out of my brush and I'll soften that paint edge there just to try and keep that top edge of that shape lighter in colour. I'm not going to paint a background because I want to keep the painting very simple. 
You'll notice that I haven't put any paint along the back edge of the shell. I've got a lost edge there instead. The burnt sienna shapes help to create the curved form of the shell, so I don't need to put any paint along that back edge. Your eye can distinguish the back edge of the shell without me having to paint it in. By leaving a lost edge there, it helps to make that back edge of the shell look further away. To stop the shells from looking like they're floating in the air, I paint a light shadow underneath them with the grey mixture of paint. That was on dry paper there. Before that grey paint dries, I'll quickly drop in a little bit of French Ultramarine. And there's that painting finished. I hope you could see all the beautiful variations in the grey paint and how that can help to make the painting more vibrant, more lively. I think it's more interesting to look at that than to look at one flat colour. So my tip again, when you mix your colours, try not to over mix them and let them blend together on the paper instead. Don't worry if your mixture separates on your palette, go with it. That's what watercolour is all about. It's alive, it's vibrant, it's unpredictable. But most of all, it's so much fun to use. These three paintings will become a beginner-friendly tutorial on my Patreon site very soon, and I hope you'll join me there. Please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you soon with a new video. So, as I said, I used burnt sienna and French ultramarine. Marine. Then what I find is that the colour on my paper will change depending on where I pink, pick the paint, pink, where I pink, I was going to say pink, where I pink the paint up, where I pink the paint up. As I said, I used French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna to mix my grey, mixed, to mix my grey. As I said, when I mixed my grey for this, this, these, these, this is, yep. When mixing colours, one tip I can share with you is this. Try not, looks like I've got a lot to share with you. It's the same mixture of grey, but there's a whole lot of different variations on the colour, on the colour in the paper. Mm. So the variations on the colour in the paper are what you need to watch. <laughs>